Hey guys, Reed here. Today I want to show you how to represent time decay by adjusting the dot size on a scatter plot chart. I was inspired to create this after I saw Parker Stevens over at BI Elite do this with the dot colors, having the dots slowly fade away as they got older with time. Watching that made me want to see how else time decay could be represented on a scatter plot visual. Now, if you'd like to see Parker's video, I'll link you to that down in the description below. But otherwise, let's hop into Power BI and get started. So I've essentially recreated what Parker originally built in his video, which is that the colors fade away with time. And a really cool play axis can also be incorporated with this. I'm going to go ahead and show you this in action. You'll notice that as the time passes on on the play axis, the dots start to appear. And then the most recent dot will be colored the darkest, with the oldest dot getting a lighter color. Now for full details on this and how to build it, I would recommend checking out Parker's video. Again, that is down in the description, but I'll just do a quick recap. Essentially, what is created here is there is a play axis date. So this table is a disconnected date table that simply has, in this case, a single column at the month and year level, because that's the level of granularity the data set, but this could also be at the day level. But either way, the goal of this is to be disconnected and you'll see why in a second. So on the play axis here, down at the bottom, that is the play month and year column from the play axis date table here. That is on the play axis. And notice that when you play it, as the months move on, the dots start to appear. So it doesn't show all of them at once. It shows them one at a time as time passes on along the axis. And the reason for this being, if I actually take a look at my measure, is that I have a couple of variables in here. Variable for the data date, so that is the actual date coming from the data table that I have. The play date here, which is the actual date coming from the play axis, that's the disconnected table, and then the actual calculation that I want to run. And there's a simple if statement being done. So if the date of my actual data is less than or equal to wherever the current play date is along this play axis, go ahead and show the value. If not, show blank. That's how they appear with time. Again, to show you that, if I hit play, that's how the dots are actually appearing as this time scrabble slowly moves forward. So again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. This is already covered in Parker's video. I now want to show you on top of doing a decay with color, how can we do a decay with size? So I did something a little different in terms of actually applying this conditional formatting um, from Parker's video. And that is one thing that I want to show you initially. So the color in here, we go to data colors, and we open this up to conditional formatting, we'll see that there's the lowest and highest value, basically lightest to darkest. And there's a measure for days elapsed. And all I'm doing here in this measure that I've created is calculate whatever the current date is. So that's basically just the date coming from the play axis at any point in time. And then the actual max date from the end of the play axis here. And I'm basically just getting a date difference between the two. So what is the date difference between basically the end date over here and whatever that current date is, meaning the current point in time as it's playing through, and it's getting a day or a daily date difference between the two. So is it 30 days away from the endpoint, 10 or 15? So what this is really doing is this is calculating just how far away are we from the end date. So the oldest value will be a very low negative number, and then essentially the very endpoint number will be zero. And you can see that reflected in the conditional formatting. By the time it reaches zero date difference, meaning my data has reached the maximum date available in the play axis, that's zero and that gets colored the highest value over here for the color in terms of that dark blue and then the lightest one. So those oldest numbers will be colored the lightest here. And that's how we're able to get that. Now you might notice something a little bit odd in this is I'm actually adding a 0 0.01 to this. Now there's a good reason for that. So let me go ahead and now show you, we have the color in front of us here. Now let's observe a scatter plot. Same one, but both with size and color into this. Do that play axis, you'll see that it starts larger. And then if we keep a look at this one or any of the others, you see that they slowly start to shrink just a little bit over time as the newer dots appear here. So I've added a second layer to this as far as that decay goes. And all I've done under the size thing here is put decay days elapsed. Now here is where the explanation for this 0.01 or 0.01 comes into play. If I go ahead and delete this, watch what happens. Notice that the very last dot here actually disappears, even though zero in terms of days elapsed, sorry, even though zero in days elapsed is 
technically the largest number versus a minus 31 or 61. For some reason, it just gets represented as a small amount. So you can't actually have for size an absolute zero. It either needs to be a little bit less than zero or a little bit more than zero. So to fix that, I just added 0 0.1, which then makes sure that that bubble stays the largest. And then for good measure, if you actually had some additional values on the legend like this here, you can just, again, still see the size decay in action. Um, as you're watching this though, the one thing that just to be aware of is you can't do conditional formatting on colors if you have anything on the legend. So that's the one thing that had to be removed. But overall, I think this is a very unique way to represent time decay. And it complements that video that Parker did very well, where you now have two different options to represent decay on a scatter plot. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.